Now hear this as a three-day podcast festival happening October 28th through the 30th in Anaheim, California. And all of your favorite shows will be there, including Hollywood Handbook, The Worst Idea of All Time, and I Was There Too. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. We'll be recording Spontane Nation Live on Sunday the 30th, so if you can only make it for one day, make sure it's Sunday, October 30th, or you'll miss out on our show. Go to nowhearthisfest.com to get tickets and information about the full lineup, hotels, and more. Use offer code PFT when you buy tickets to save 25% on a three-day pass and let them know we sent you. That's nowhearthisfest.com, offer code PFT. Welcome. 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 Guys, I welcome you. Everyone, everyone in the world, I'm not excluding anyone. This is not, here's the thing. What we do here, it's not a private club. It's not about us being on the inside, other people being on the outside. It's not about we all look the same and sound the same and talk the same. Fat kids, skinny kids, kids that climb on rocks. I don't know why the Armor Hot Dogs jingle is always right on the outside of my thoughts, waiting to come in. It's like a weird... Have you seen the movie It Follows? For me, it's the Armor Hot Dog theme. It's chasing me, chasing me, chasing me. Why don't they bring it back? Uh, I guess in 2016, you can't call kids fat anymore. (laughs) Well, some kids are fat. (laughs) Can I tell you something? I love fat kids. I know these people. They have a baby. That baby is so fat. He's like a, oh, he's like a little gorilla. He's just a big fatso with a big belly triple chins I want to eat him he my his arms have so many rolls my 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 wife said his arms look like a a a can of Pillsbury (laughs) Grands like you want to bake his arms in the oven there's nothing wrong with a big fat baby fat adults ugh Forget it. Listen, we all got struggles with various things. Some people are too skinny and it's a problem. Fuck you. (laughs) I was always self-conscious when I was a kid because I was so skinny. Were you? How long did that last? A year? Don't come crying to me with, I was so skinny. I'll I'll force feed you armor hot dogs. Why don't we do that instead of waterboarding? Make it a contest. Like a forced contest. And so for a while, it's actually pleasant. You gain the trust of the person you're interrogating. And then... After a while, you're like, they're, let's say they eat 10 hot dogs. And they're like, ooh, I think I'm done. I'm like, just one more. You just keep saying, just one more. At this point, if you've done your job right, and I hope you have, you've gained their trust to where the first 10 hot dogs were a treat. And they think, this person is now on my side. And maybe you throw things in like, hey, between you and me, all of us here at Guantanamo, Guantanamo Bay. I almost said Gu- Guantanamo Bay. All of us here. We actually think you're right. We've come around. How about we celebrate with ten hot dogs? <laughs> then it's time for number eleven, and the terrorist is like, "I think I'm good." And then you say. Just one more. Now, he's your friend. He doesn't want to disappoint you. Of course he eats an 11th hot dog. Okay, but that's enough. I really should be 
<laughs> getting back to destroying America. <laughs> Just one more. Ooh, I feel like he's embraced my point of view. I should probably eat a 12th hot dog. Before you know it, you got all of his secrets. And you've gotten rid of all those cases and cases of hot dogs you bought by accident. Because you didn't check on Amazon. You're not buying one package of hot dogs. You're buying a crate of packages of hot dogs. Who hasn't done that before? I mean, not with hot dogs. I did it with hand soap one time. <laughs> where I did not... <laughs> I did not realize I was buying quite as much hand soap. <laughs> oh, Paul, you have so much money, you don't even look at the price. <laughs> I didn't look at the price because I thought I was buying <laughs> one, <laughs> one bottle of hand soap. <laughs> Guess what, though? <laughs> we needed the hand soap <laughs> for a year, and we're all set. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals along to do a narrative improv with me that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. Utilizing details from my conversation with said special guest and it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's how he goes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing something a little bit different today, and I'm very excited about it. For the second time, we have two guests who are our interview guests and our improvisers. It's just the three of us. You know these people from various things, but you know them from right here. They are the JVs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Two of my favorite people in the world who happen to share the same initials. Janet Varney and Jean Villapique. Yay! It's JV! JV! The JVs! Are you the varsity side? <laughs> <laughs> I don't look at it that way. Thank you for being here. <laughs> you only looked at me? Yeah. Uh, and? Oh, I see. Uh, and thank you for being here. That's right. And I'm going to thank forward. myself. I'm going to thank oh, myself. Oh, you ended it. Oh, oh no, Bob, thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, are you excited for our little intimate <laughs> gathering that we're about yes. to have? Yes. This is a surprise. I didn't tell you till you got here. Yeah, it's I true. didn't know. If- I knew yesterday. Here's the thing. We had a guest drop out and we had an improviser drop out. And then I looked at the people that were remaining, and I said, I want to do this. And so here we are. Cool. (laughs) I thought, because you usually send an email out the night before that I had it wrong, which is why I emailed you. And then when you were like, no, what's happening? I was like, maybe it's some sort of special big celebrity. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I love right? the song now. Yeah. I love it. It's a terrible song. <laughs> now, Jan and I noticed you were not really forming words until the very last stanza. <laughs> a little slushy. I call them mouth flaps, as if you're a cool. puppet. Yeah. That is Just gross. Just flap, flapping my yap. <laughs> General and you, sound. And Jean, you said it sounded slushy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like family which, dinner. which is more disgusting, <laughs> mouth flaps or slushy? That's slushy. combo. Combo. Well, slushy is like you could be drunk, right? That's, you immediately go sure. into the sort of you get intoxicated the second you start singing. Slushy it. leads to a mouth flap. That's true. That's Wait inevitable. a second. You're saying that singing the song makes you sing mm-hmm. that way? <laughs> it oh, gets yeah. me bah, so bah, bah. drunk, so fast. <laughs> it's a powerful song. It's a, it's it a is a powerful song. song. <laughs> it has the power to shut things down. <laughs> Restaurants. It's mortifying, sure. isn't it? It's mortifying. I, I really do detest it. 
I don't like singing it for other people either. Yeah. I don't like being the object of it. I don't <laughs> like being a participant in it in any way. It's terrible. What do you? How do you feel about people's response to that? The invention of the "This is your birthday" song isn't very long because I hate that one. What's too. that one? Oh. They're all That's terrible. Like, so, so you don't have to go it feels it. like it was born because, well, I'll sing it for you. Okay. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Da 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 boom die. And that feels yeah. like yeah. it's, don't take it any steps further. Boom. Because it is a slap in the face to the original birthday song by right. being so short, but it's yet also obnoxious. But like the original birthday song, borrowed melody yeah. that someone just slapped their yeah. own lyrics onto, I feel like. What's wrong with a good old three cheers for this person? Sure. Hip, hip, hooray, hip, yeah. hip, hooray. Yes, I feel like if you're singing to somebody, it steals the, I mean, sure, the whole room is usually singing, but it is like, what do you do when someone sings to you? And it's like, well, listen yeah. to me, go. Like, it's just like a lot of time to just give it up for the singers. And <laughs> It's too long. It's too yeah. long and dirge-like. And it's strange that it became, it's so strange that it became the thing that we yeah. all do. What if yeah. it was a dirge? What if you... Happy death day. Are you yeah. like a funeral ball bearing thing? That's, you that's what are it leaving well, that's, but that's this point. earth. Yeah, that's if the person's already like. dead, they don't have to be uncomfortable with how long it takes. Yeah. It should be sung to a wooden box. Right? It's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, that's its perfect application. That's how I feel when people sing it to me. JVs, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This question comes to us from our previous episode's guest. Who was are the you, previous are you guest? Curious I'm dying to know. The I can't please tell us again. Please, longer please. To no. It was uh, Zach Gowan, the professional wrestler. He asks. <laughs> but what about the past episodes of this podcast? <laughs> yeah, do what you feel. I'm not sure I believe you, so I'm going to go. the low, low price of. Uh... <laughs> now, I know you are not. You don't listen to comedy podcasts, Janet. Not really. And Gene, do you ever listen to podcasts? Do you I listen, listen to podcasts this one at all? occasionally. I listen to he, one that's the British. One that's just like oh, in our British time. And it's just oh, like, yeah, in our time. This is pancakes. I, I mean, no, it's it's not pancakes. It's historical stuff. It's just like a real short. <laughs> in our time, which I, I, I can't recall if we've mentioned it on this show or not before, but it's a, it's a super fascinating podcast. And they talk about concepts. They talk about things in history. They talk about just the idea of, you know, social constructs. They yeah. talk about anything. They might have had pancakes in there at some point. Maybe. But that is one that you have to be doing nothing else. You better be ready to listen and focus on that thing. Because I, w- I remember one time I was even just ironing some shirts and listening to it. And I was like, God damn, I have to back this up again. Yes. <laughs> I was concentrating too hard totally. on that sleeve yeah. and I lost the thread of that conversation. I listen to it when I hike and I realize in two seconds, I'm like, pick up your dog, just people with their dogs off the leash. Uh-oh. Same thing. Yeah. I, I don't rewind anything as much as like 15, 15, 15. 15. Yeah. And I just say, I, I feel like I listened to the whole thing twice because – it does go quickly, and everyone's so uh, uh, smarty. Yes. And it just, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really, like, when they start arguing about a thing and deconstructing it and, and saying, well, I disagree with that idea, it's 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 fascinating. But, yeah, man, oh, man, you better be ready. Now I'm just imagining both of you sitting in a room completely still at a, on a, sitting on a chair, not doing anything, listening to the podcast. I like the idea of Actually, that. Actually, yeah. Why don't we do okay. listening parties <laughs> Yeah, where everyone... <laughs> <laughs> it's played over a speaker, but everyone just yeah. sits there still, yeah. their hands on their knees. Uh-huh. Do you know they have the these second silent- one person is like, I'm sorry, I lost track of what's going on. Everyone has to listen to the last 15 <laughs> like seconds. Or yeah, they say, that person's, <laughs> that person's out. That person's out. Could be a process of elimination. <laughs> <laughs> they just uh, <laughs> duck down. <laughs> have you, do you guys know about these silent discos where everybody yes! gets headphones? I've never seen one or participated in one, but all of a sudden... I heard thing. about that too. And if, Yeah, yeah. So everyone, everyone has headphones and they're same dancing. Same music. Same music and they're dancing. And so it seems Silently. like you're all at the same party, but if you take your headphones off, it's silent and everyone is just dancing like a bunch of... That sounds terrifying. No. I, I would like it, I think. <laughs> would I? I don't think I would like that. I mean, then why not just dance by yourself, I guess? <laughs> I guess so it's just to not yeah. share the music. Or I guess so I it's not loud. there is something where it becomes this thing you're very aware of. Like you can't step out. Like you're sort of stepped outside of it thinking the whole time it's dead silent. It's dead silent. If I take these out, it's dead silent. Like what if I might you have that? Much about but it's it. not dead silent because it's the Shuffling, weird noise of people panting dancing. Panting a little yeah, bit exactly. and like <laughs> ew, ew. Yeah. someone off, singing off, a little grunting. bit along. <laughs> yeah. Just the breathing could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird. I think I would be very aware of that. Just hear people uh-huh. exerting yeah. themselves. Yeah. Like, huh. like what? What weirdness happens? <laughs> <laughs> we don't hear close. <laughs> 
Oh, gross. <laughs> Now, is that better or worse than the, the restaurants where they turn all the lights off and you have to feel your food? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what there's, is this? There's restaurants that you go and it's pitch black. You're what? Kidding. Where? You aren't everywhere. Kidding. This is a real thing. No, I don't think they're everywhere. <laughs> I think there I think there's Finland. one. <laughs> that feels right, right? They have that so much right. I think there's one here in the United States, at least one here in the United States. Okay. And maybe in the UK. Got to be in, J- in, in Japan for sure. They must. I think Japan, there's a restaurant where cats serve you. I'm sure, I'm sure that's Come true. on. <laughs> I'm sure it's true. <laughs> she oh, calls yeah, bullshit no. on that one. Just... He calls bullshit on that one. (laughs) (laughs) They love cats over there. They love them. So, (laughs) it's the originator of the cat cafe. Yeah. I, I I don't I can't understand. Get your own pet. I don't know. I don't understand why you'd want to come with other strangers around. Do you know what? Maybe you this I get more. I would rather go to a place where there's a bunch of animals hanging out around <laughs> than have to clean shit yeah. out of a box. Like visiting your friends with kids That's and being true. like a fun aunt or uncle. Exactly. I guess so. I, I a friend of mine in Chicago and I used to say we would we should rent out puppies for the day, like on the lake shore there. Because mm-hmm. that would be fun to just have a pet a little bit. But I yeah. don't know why the cafe I don't know why I just I hate people I don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> no I'm, I don't hate people but I'm saying like maybe I do okay. you hate some well, people they're, they're for free sure. to like their cats with yeah. cafes what do I care yeah you know what I just realized while we were talking about this is I became certain that I would be the hu- the, the 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 cat cafe patron version of the guy who thinks the stripper is in love with him where I would be like <gasps> I'm pretty sure that cat actually really was in like that cat I we had a connection do you know what though? There's a you thing. Know. Somebody's doing a thing where they there are shelter dogs that they are letting people take for walks, mm-hmm. and then they bring them back. And then what happens uh, is people get attached to the dogs, and then they adopt them. Yeah, and it works like a fucking charm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine the dog that you have to be to not get adopted after that oh. interaction, where it's mm. like this dog sucks. A terrible yeah. walker. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I'm trying to think if I would have adopted either of my dogs after one walk with their horrible leash behavior. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have. Are they really bad? They're so great in so much. That's not fair to my my husky Whitley is actually great. She for sure does the thing where it seems like she is expecting to be pulling a sled. Mm-hmm. She sort of just like she barely looks around. She just puts her head down is like, let's get there. Let's do this. Um, but my other dog is like, he, I mean, he's fully trained on the leash, but he darts around. He's getting old. So it's sort of, I think he's just like, screw all of you. I don't care. And <laughs> he just, he, have, he gets aggressive breed? and he have a different he's a mutt, that, but he's oh. part husky, oh. possibly part, uh, Australian shepherd it, 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 dogs that are supposed to behave themselves. But they're great <laughs> right, dogs off right. the leash. Put them on, put them on a leash. And then she's a bad influence on her. Yada, yada, yada. There you're outnumbered. Yeah. They've ganged up on you. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 but they are good uh, at home just hanging Wonderful. out. Wonderful, yeah. They're, they're not like mischievous bad dogs or aggressive dogs. Mm-hmm. Leashes are tough, you guys. Gene, do you have any pets? Have you ever had no, any pets? No, we had a dog, Pepper, when I was growing up because our family, our family went to therapy and the therapist was like, you need to get a dog to help everyone express love. So we were all like, fuck you, fuck you. Pepper, I love you. Pepper, I love you. Like, <laughs> everybody was just like, Pepper, Pepper, Pepper. I remember that. I remember Pepper from when you did my podcast. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Pepper was a great dog. I was about dog. to say, do you have someone, a dog named Pepper or an animal named oh Pepper? Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm getting a, 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 a pepper. <laughs> pepper. Is there a pepper a in pea? your life? Is there a Does that mean anything? Who's, oh, who's yeah, a yeah. spice? Who's a common spice in yeah. your life? Yes. Who's a common spice in your life? Sporty. Same name. But now no pets. No pets. I'm allergic to cats. My husband is very allergic to dogs. So, And he did suggest a, a, a pig. <laughs> I won't <laughs> abide by that. <laughs> that because. changes who you are, not to just yourselves, but to everyone around you. Yeah, I Suddenly think he you're might that have been testing me. Yeah. I, he might have been tested. Just to say like, well, she you said yes, and he would be like, okay, you said yes, well, let's just do it. Oh no, then it's a but dare. I don't want to know what it sounds like. It's I don't want to. <laughs> it really is. I'm, I'm glad we have this pig. <laughs> I am I'm, even more glad. We should get two pigs. <laughs> it's got a whole barnyard in here. <laughs> Guys, we never got to the question. We're going to take a break. <laughs> and when true? we come, it's true. <laughs> and then we come back. <laughs> I will ask you the question. <laughs> More when Spontaneous Nation returns after this. Get a job. Oh, that song needs an update. Maybe it should be Give a Job. 
what am I talking about with singing? Let me tell you something. Are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates for that job? Because posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. You want the good ones, not the bad ones, right? Uh, Maybe I'm presuming too much. Maybe you want the bad candidates for the job because you want your company to suffer. If you want to find the, you're crazy, by the way, if you do that. If you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can with ZipRecruiter.com. You can post your job to 100 plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll in like so many BB-8s to ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. Speaking of interface, BB-8 had interfaces. Remember, he made a lighter do a thumbs up. Do you need someone to do that job? No juggling emails or calls to your office. You can quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. This is a big deal because when you're trying to get somebody to do a thing, right? You have you have a position that you need filled, somebody to help you with your business, whatever it is. It can take a long time to find the right person, and it's a hassle, and it's demoralizing. This makes it easier. So that's good, right? Guys, do I have to spell this out for you? <laughs> find out today... Why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 1 million businesses. That's million with an M. Impressive. And right now, listeners of Spontaneous Nation can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash PFT. Look, I know that there's a percentage of my listeners who are self-employed people. They have their own thing going on, and they listen. They they have the, the luxury of listening to podcasts while they work. Thank you for listening. If you are in the market for this service, ZipRecruiter, uh, you help me out by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash PFT. Help my small business. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash PFT. One more time to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash PFT. Give a job. Ooh. Welcome back. Spontaneous Nation listeners, this is us, Spontaneous Nation doers. We're still here. We didn't go anywhere, neither did you. We never got to our question. (laughs) (laughs) And so we're going to ask the question now. This question comes to us from last week's guest, and that question is, what what brings you fulfillment? What brings you fulfillment? That's a Heavy. deeper question than many of the questions I've heard yeah. asked. The last two questions were about food. So yeah. we're taking a, <laughs> a, a turn now. Yeah. Hmm. Jean, let's start with you. I will say music. Music, mm, playing music nice. or listening to music, I think is is pretty powerful, Evan <laughs> Yeah. You, it's pretty <laughs> powerful it stuff. It's true. Um, pretty powerful stuff. And Jean, you are, both of you sing and you both mm-hmm. play guitar is that correct yeah yes. yes and we've both played guitar with kit ponjetti we've both been in duos with <laughs> that's, right. that's right with jv yeah yours JV was fe- Janet, your was do- fempire mm-hmm. and then what was yours Janet? the, the oh. artists yeah the, uh, that is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound yeah. as funny <laughs> <laughs> yours was not as painfully high concept as ours was, <laughs> <laughs> was low low oh, concept better, was that better. did you got gene did you guys play funny songs or was it serious stuff it was kind of uh it was their light rock covers so mm. we play them uh, uh sincerely but f- w- having fun doing them so we're not making fun of them m- not making fun of the songs or anything like we play a bg song and we're not like ha, 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 you know we're not trying to make fun of them i did like that though but we do yeah, a little I know, I would listen to that. we kind of play we do that a little bit but there's just a whimsy. kind of fine i would say Thank they bring you. whimsy we try to bring whimsy fun to, yeah. and whimsy yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what inspired, what, how, when did you first start playing music? Well, I was in like handbell choir and took piano lessons when I was six and in <laughs> church choir. and singing handbell and all that choir. stuff. And then trumpet in fourth grade <laughs> because boys play trumpet. I mean, I was really like, uh, this is how I meet the boys. And then I was like, bah! 
like had a big red ring around my this mouth. This is like, how I'll meet the boys. <laughs> Not a good idea. The flute is a good idea, ladies. Uh, and you had a permanent <laughs> mouthpiece impression on your mouth. Yeah, it did not work. <laughs> Janet, what about you? How old were you? Uh, I, for some, now it, the the whole kind of like your parents give you piano lessons thing, I don't even associate with myself, but I recently remembered like, oh yeah, when I was in first grade, my parents for sure got me piano lessons. Mm-hmm. I don't remember ever expecting that, first asking grade. for it. Yeah, first grade. Wow. And then Doesn't by... That, I'm sorry, that seems young to yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, That's I just crazy, don't, right? I, I think... You I can't did even love move your my fingers music that here. much. Yeah, no. I just well, mine hadn't fully grown in, so I just had little stubs. <laughs> I just, just had the a nail pound. Yeah. First knuckle came in. I would be in. hitting four notes at a time uh, with my uh, fist, uh, and then <laughs> I must have quit that after only a couple years. So I still kind of remember, like I know all the notes on a piano. I mean, it's pretty easy because it just starts over again after eight. Yeah. But um, but then I started taking classical guitar when I was in fifth grade, mm. and fifth grade. I've been avoiding practicing ever since. <laughs> I heard you talk about uh, that recently, that you you haven't touched your guitar in a little bit, right? Yeah, it just sits over there. Yeah. I was talking about that on my podcast, I yeah, guess. Yeah. yeah, it just, I don't have that, like, noodling thing where I just pick it up, like, your Mike Furman's or your Dave Hills, who just go, listen, I gotta pick up the, and probably you. I just don't, Sometimes. I need to have a, a very specific reason. Like, we want you to play at this thing, right. learn this, right, or right. write something for this. Which, by the way, no one has asked me to do in so long that that is a very dusty guitar. Now you have Guess opened what? up the door. That's right. America. That's right. What, uh, what else brings you fulfillment? Um, I would say being outdoors, mm-hmm. like exercising outdoors, which I still feel apologetic about somehow because I never thought of myself as that person until a couple of years into being, no, like a few years into being in L.A. Suddenly... I wanted to do all the stuff outside. Now I'm a jock. So wait, do you still have in your mind an idea that that's not who you are? Yeah. So when you say it's something it, I keep trying. Even to though people who don't know you, if you were to say yeah. this to someone, that it still feels like yeah. false somehow. Hundred percent, because I avoided PE. I avoided. I never learned how to play any organized sports other than like riding my bike, which I was not doing as a teenager or as a trial for exercise, as mm-hmm. much as just you know to sort of get away particularly after I didn't learn to drive when I was 16 because I was afraid to drive. That was my only way of sort of getting myself somewhere by myself. Mm. Um, and uh, and now I need that, like I need to exercise to feel okay emotionally. Mm. And I that only came from being here for a few years and realizing I didn't want to work out inside mm-hmm. and I needed to have, like if I was going to be on a bicycle, I needed to have like gone somewhere Mm -hmm. (laughs) on it and posted just spinning wheels so So, you had you had tried being in a gym kind of i mean what were like the things that turned you off to that well everything i feel like i worked out with a trainer who i originally went to see because a friend of mine i like hurt myself it wasn't like listen i just want to get buff and trim (laughs) it was like oh i've harmed myself probably from walking what did you you do i just hurt my back somehow i had like a a, probably tension you Mm -hmm. know that just like i did something and something slipped out of place and my friend said why i I worked with this personal trainer who's really really great at sort of building up your other muscles and kind of showing you how to do physical therapy type stuff and i ended up working out with him for a few years and he got me into like boxing stuff which was Mm -hmm. very fun Uh, if you have aggression that you need to get out um and uh and then at a certain point, um, I just kind of started like, I was like, I do like, I, like now I'm feeling kind of fit. Like all these people I see running, I've never done that. I wonder if I could run. So then I started running. And then after like a year, I had hurt my knees. <laughs> but, but I started trying all this different stuff. And now like in a week, if I have time, what I like to do is like ride my bike three days, go for a couple of hikes and play tennis a couple of mm-hmm. times. And those are all things that take place in the beautiful Griffith Park area. Absolutely. Gene, what is an early memory of fulfillment for you? A moment when you realized, like, early on, this gives me, this gives me joy in my soul. Um, oh my gosh, I guess it was all, (laughs) I guess it was like doing Grease, like listening to Grease and getting together with my neighbors and like acting for the first time. Although I was Danny. I had to do Danny. Sure. But, you know. That's great. Tall, I brunette. I you were terrific. Like, it was fine. Stranded at the drive-in. I could do it anyway. But I think <laughs> just feeling that play that way, 
Um, we used, now you said you, you got together with your neighbors? Yeah, the Boyces lived next door, the two, Chris and Amy Boyce, and we would like. And you were like, we're going to put on a production. It. Yeah, yeah. You would, just but sing you along. would. Right. And you, but you would, it was like kind of organized. It was not like banners and costumes. It was like, I, I think it was like, we have a record player in your family room, and we're going to charge our parents to watch us sing along with a record player in the family. It was low <laughs> production That's value. Great. Right. That, lots of heart, yeah. Oh, did great. you have, did you dance and everything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> but, but, just like, that when you, before you care about what you look like in any way. <laughs> Everything's fulfilling in that age, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. But now, so now, who was the, were you kind of the leader of this? Was this I'm your sure. idea? I'm sure, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my record. I used to kiss John Travolta. I mean, I was so obsessed with it. I got to see that movie twice, which was a big deal. And I was... Not 10. I was young. You know, I yeah. think I was so seeing a movie twice was a big deal. And it was just, I'm sure it's on every week, but I, my husband and I were watching the end and I was like, my mom, my mom's words ringing. Am I like, oh, she has to become a slut. This movie, oh, he doesn't sure. have to change. I mean, he kind of puts on his letter jacket and I was like, oh yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah. so. But look at those shoes. She's got the yeah. greatest shoes on at the end. I kind of don't care. <laughs> oh, with the, the little cut out, like They're a like peep fabric. toe. They're like red fabric, oh, like a candy heel with a red fabric. Okay. I don't know. A friend yeah. of mine watched the movie Grease with her little daughter, who uh, I guess at the time was maybe five or six, something like that. So she was verbal, but she was little. And she's a, she, this kid is hilarious and so they're watching the movie and so as the scene's coming up where Sandy at the end of Greece turns into a, a slut <laughs> like she's she's gone from this nice girl to like wearing tight leather yeah. clothing and everything yeah. and so my friend uh, you know this is her daughter and she's watching and she knows this is coming and so she has like a little speech prepared where she's going to say now look even <laughs> though this is happening Sandy like makes her own choices blah 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 like this whole thing <laughs> And then before she could say anything, this little girl, as soon as she sees no. Olivia and John in that outfit, says, she looks amazing. <laughs> oh, no. But she does, right? She does yes. look amazing. It's, it's like universal. It's yeah. yeah, it's a truth, right? Yeah. It's like she looks She looks like Catwoman. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But she does look, it's weird because she looks more confident and more in control. Yeah. And it's hard to, it's such a jumble of I things. Know. It's a, you know, it's a confusing like, time. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I, I the rem- confidence, sorry. The, oh, sorry, no, no, the confidence no. is such a huge thing. That yeah. is why the other part's not so great because she's kind no, of yeah. apologetic. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It, that's the lesson that you get taught. I remember thinking, even when I was little, when he puts his meat hook on her tiny body when she has no clothes, like covering it up, it just looks like she has latex painted on. Yeah. Even then, I remember thinking, I'm bigger than that. Like, I remember thinking, <laughs> uh, like, oh, she's very, very small. Right. I guess I should be that small? Like, I do, I do yeah. remember that. I remember thinking, oh, her, she looks so tiny against his hand. That's the problem. She's wow. really small. I, that's the, dangerous yeah, right there. The, the problem is it's presented at the end, like, this is this is the smart thing yeah. to do. She this finally is, woke up yeah. and became this slut. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think I this was, powerful like. Slut. Also, no proof that she's a slut. Yeah, I She's just all. dressing differently. Not that's not the only at thing. All. But it's like, not you're. Mine does go there yeah. because the buildup to yeah. that moment is like she's a quote nice girl, right? Yeah. You know, and then when that happens, like I guess she's not nice anymore. Or that I don't There's know. There's just two it's choices. So, what a <laughs> yeah, messed that's up it. Two ending. Choices. <laughs> <know>. Two choices. <laughs> but then they do get in a car that drives up into the sky, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh so sure. Yeah, take the ending of Greece with a okay. grain of salt. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you do shows? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. In high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. From, from as soon as I was able to, I don't think we ever got it together. My grade school didn't do school plays or anything like that. One time that I can remember, and I was the narrator of something that was a play that was in our English book. Um, and then uh, uh, that that's like all I can remember. And then uh, in high school, we did musicals. And we would do... Um, uh, a children's theater in the fall and then oh. a big traditional musical in the spring. And one year, the and I, I may have talked about it on this before, but the 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 children's theater that we did was a, a completely illegal version of Mary Poppins. <laughs> that there was no stage production of Mary Poppins at the time. And so somebody had just taken the, mo- the shooting script for the movie and adapted it yep. for the stage. 
And that was our, and the way around it was not calling it Mary Poppins, but calling it the practically perfect nanny. But then in the middle of the show, a screen came down. This is to cover a big costume scene change. Screen came down. We just showed a clip from the movie. <laughs> so it's like, why? What? I don't understand. As if to say, please don't compare what you're seeing on the screen right now. Like, as a reminder, like, and now the professional version. <laughs> well, yeah. And now our version. And you know what? It was the animated sequence, the Jolly Holiday yeah, thing, where yeah, they go to yeah. <laughs> Poppins Cartoon, Land or wherever the fuck. Yeah. Chalk Land. Yeah, and those, those penguins. Oh, yeah, they yeah. jump into a chalk drawing. That's yeah. right. And so um, maybe that was the way around. It's like, uh, look, what we're doing <laughs> is practical. We're, we're doing get... it right in front of your yes. faces. This is yeah. all made up bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> There's no animated kids at the school. We got no penguins here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. All these kids are just smearing soot on their faces to be chimney sweeps. <laughs> all right. We have to take a break. When we return, we will get our location from the JVs, and then we will do our improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Frames! Oh, David Bowie. Hey, guys. Framing photos, framing artwork, it's important. You want to look like a person who knows what they're doing and how to display nice things in your nice home don't just tape it up on the wall. Don't don't do some computer printout and then get it out the thumbtacks. Don't use that weird gum from college dorms. Here's what you do. You go to framebridge.com. This is online framing. It could not be simpler. You go to framebridge.com. You choose your frame. They have all these different frames to choose from. Or they have people, they have designers there who can help you out. If you're like, I don't know, what do I do? Should the frame be wood or metal? Do you have frames made out of razor blades? They don't. I mean, I haven't looked at the entire selection of frames. I am willing to bet though, that they don't have razor blade frames. Will they frame a razor blade? I don't know that either. I was kind of just looking at pictures and stuff. Pictures. You upload your photo from your computer or directly from Instagram. If you're proud of your snaps, if you're like, oh man, what a great shot I got of that sunset or that dumb brunch I had. You want to put that in a frame? You be my guest. You can do whatever you want. It's still a free country as of this recording. You preview the photo online in the frame that you chose so you can see exactly how it's going to look. If you can't upload your photo or art, no worries. Mail it in for free. They're making it so easy for you to have a nice thing. And it's affordable. Instead of the hundreds you'd pay at a framing store, which, by the way, that can really get expensive, even at the inexpensive places, it, it's, a, it's a big proposition. Let's say you got a, a favorite old movie poster and you want to put that in a nice frame. It's going to run into money, my friends. FrameBridge's prices start at $39 and all shipping is free. I mean, come on. There's lots of quality options. FrameBridge has a frame for every style from clean and classic to more eclectic. That means dirty and modern in my book. If it's the opposite of clean and classic, it's filthy and it just happened yesterday. FrameBridge uses premium real wood moldings, acid-free matte board and foam board, and their acrylic glazing will never shatter. How dare you think that it would? Who are you? And it protects your piece from harmful, harmful UV rays. Your artwork, you know, the, the picture. You know what I'm saying. That's when I say it protects your piece. And happiness is guaranteed. This is one of the few places where it is. The expert team at FrameBridge will custom frame your item in days, not weeks or months like you thought. You're really making me mad, this ad. And they will deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. Ready to go. You don't have to screw on the wire thing on the back. Oh, what a what a cruel awakening that is when you thought it was all done. And then you get some little weird envelope. Like, good luck getting this centered, stupid. They write that on the receipt. 
The expert team at FrameBridge is ready to help you. They offer a happiness guarantee. Their team gives each item personal care and attention because meeting your expectations is as important as meeting their own. How about that? Like, so they, they want to do a nice job for you with your framing because they have expectations in their own personal lives. So maybe like people at FrameBridge, like after a while they said to their fathers, Hey, you weren't present in my life. <laughs> and I had to be a father to myself. <laughs> I'm going to go work at FrameBridge because that's a place where I can care about things like you didn't. That's what I imagine happened. Listen, get started today. Go to framebridge.com. Use promo code PFT. You will save an additional 15% off your first order. Go to framebridge.com, promo code PFT. I've done it, and I love the results. They they gave me, you know, if, uh, 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 they gave me a little, you know, something for advertising, and it worked out great. It worked out great. It like the thing looked the way that it said it was going to look. I was very pleased with the results, and you will be too. Go to framebridge.com, promo code PFT. Make your life better in your home. Great slogan. You put on your. <laughs> Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. Everything is good. <laughs> Everything's fine. You've taken off your chunky bracelet. Put on okay, your improv sweater. <laughs> you put on your improv sweater, <laughs> taken off your everyday bracelet. <laughs> All right. Does that make you like a slutty version of jeans? <laughs> yeah, the good bracelet girl version? is so slutty. All the characters are sluts. Thank <laughs> you. Sluts. I hate that word. Sluts. Know, it's terrible. It's it terrible. Is a terrible. Word. It's kind of. We apologize. I feel like that word is starting to become hilarious to me. The word slut. Yeah. It's so old it's fashioned. Yeah, it doesn't even yeah. mean anything. Thing. It doesn't. Yeah. I don't yeah. associate it with reality. Is yeah. I guess what the what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't associate it with reality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's I don't heavy. think of a real person that way. It just has become this sort of cartoonish thing that I don't apply to anyone. I think of slutty cartoons all the time. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I draw them. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of Robert Crumbs over here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. We have gotten our location <laughs> from little Jana Varney and Jean Villa Peak, and we are ready to reveal it. However, I got to let you know something, <laughs> just so you know. In order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects to move us about in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening the exact same moment somewhere else. A meanwhile, if you will, we use this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. Let's say someone is having a memory. We are discovering how something came to be. We will use this flash back sound effect. Ta da! What if we need to return from the flashback to the present day or travel into the mysterious future? We use this flash forward sound effect. Couldn't be simpler. Couldn't be simpler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that you know that, it is time to reveal our location provided to us by Dean Vladeek, by Janet Varney, working in concert as a team in tandem. <laughs> and that location is... Under a big rainstorm! <laughs> we take you now! To under a big rainstorm. <laughs> Woo. Oh. Really coming down. Yeah. I forgot my umbrella. I did too. I did too. Uh, I did too. Wow. It's We're so weird because it's been raining for a week and every other day this week I've had it. Oh, I've, I've never had an umbrella. Uh, can I be honest? I don't know what one looks like. <laughs> Oh my, I really wish I had it now. I wish one of us had some chalk. We could at least sketch something on the ground for you to see, if get only. a sense of. Yeah. Well, it'd just wash away in the rain, wouldn't it? I guess. Hey, I'm... I'm Todd, by the way. Hey! I'm Helly. Hi, Helly. My name is Pam. Hi, hey, Pam. Pam. Pam or Pamped? <laughs> Pamped? But the PT is silent, usually. Uh, Do you know other Pamps? You know, over the years. Uh, 
I'm usually the only pamp in a classroom or something like that. Oh, I'm, sh- I'm sure. <laughs> well, Todd, you look all dressed up. I hope you're not missing something. Uh, I'm supposed to go to this. <sighs> supposed to go to this funeral. Oh. And I was going to be the guy to sing the funeral song. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's important. Oh, that, yeah, I know. A I lot know. of people say a soul can't move on until that song's been oh, sung. Oh no, is that true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, I feel like a real jerk now. Well. <laughs> maybe the rain. Maybe the rain will let up. You know. Maybe someone else knows the song. How many? I mean, is it? Was you think it's gonna be a big service or? I haven't seen him at all. I don't know where he is either. <laughs> I told you he never should have gotten Todd to do the song. He's so unreliable, though. I, I don't know why you said yes. I hate him. He's so proud of his singing. He's been singing it all year to practice throughout all of the treatments and all of the sadness. <laughs> Janine, just because he's proud of himself doesn't mean he's someone anyone can count on. Try Janine, to remember that. Janine Todd does not have the wherewithal to be a good, responsible person. Let's give him another 15 minutes. Yeah. I believe in Todd, and we need this soul to be released. Well, we've only booked the hall for two hours, so 15 minutes is about all we have left before they give us the boot. Arthur, Miriam, maybe you could sing it if he can't. What the very idea? <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with how much that offended me. Never mind. I'll, I'll try his cell again, but oh, he's not picking up. Ugh, my phone keeps doing this thing. It's playing this racist song. Are you going to... Do you not... That might be the the ringer. I mean, that might be notifying you that you're getting a... An the, incoming the call? telephone's ringer? Yeah. It, every phone alerts you when it's ringing. Yeah, I thought like phones were like, ring, ring, ring. Well, right. you've never seen an umbrella. No. Hmm. <laughs> You're an interesting guy. Am I? Todd. Yeah, Todd. Helly, look over here at this door. There is something very bizarre about this man, and I've never met him before. Uh, no, I've, I've, I've never met him either. But he doesn't know. Is. And he doesn't know how to answer his cell phone or he doesn't understand when it's ringing. And he won't walk wet to a funeral. Walk in the water. It's a funeral. That's a really good point. I hadn't even thought about that. I'm kind of nervous. Anything could happen out of this tarp. He could be some sort of robot killer. <laughs> he, yeah, he could be. I hear about that happening all the time in the city. They look like real people, but they don't know things like what a tomato is. Yeah, remember when that... Uh, Weird robot killer killed a bunch of people last year. Excuse me, is this the line to see the play? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm taking my granddaughter here for I'm the so birthday. I'm so excited. I am a theater critic reviewing this for the Human Times. Oh, oh. a writer. This is another career in the theater. Uh, well, I think that's mostly for people who just don't like other people or things. Can I interview you for my column? <laughs> oh, wow. Grandma, what do you think? We don't know very much, but if she has, we'd be honored. Please talk into the barrel of this microphone. Yeah, that was like super scary and extremely sad. Well, let's not talk into any microphones. Whatever happens. Okay. No interviews. Um, um, um. No I, arm wrestling. Uh, I think we should just try to distract him as much as we can with idle conversation, hoping that, you know, this rain lets up and he goes on his way and whatever he's planning, we're not the victims. <laughs> so smart, Helly. Thanks, Pamped. Hey, guys. Oh, t- oh t- hi, t- 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 Hey, um, I couldn't help but notice that you guys kind of turned away and you were just kind of talking amongst yourselves and... I was just yeah, no, it was just a girl. It was a lady. It was a girl. It was a girl. Talk about the thing. Are you both girls? Can well, you excuse us for a second? Sure. I realize that he. Yes, I. <gasps> I realize I that he's standing right next to us mm-hmm. because there's not that far for any of us to go, and for some reason we also refuse to run out in the rain. <sighs> but he doesn't know that we're both girls, which I guess is fine. But Except that I don't think either one of us have like a. We're not androgynous. Androgynous women. look. Which is fine. I mean, look, at, I, I, the reason I can't go out is because of this hairstyle. I, I know, mean, it is I'm extremely... A hair model. B- you are? I mean, I don't want to be bragging about it all the time, but yes, I'm on my way to a shoot. Oh <laughs> my gosh, so you really have a good reason for not wanting to get wet. Absolutely. I just have one of those, uh, that disease where if you get water on your skin, it burns. 
burns you. Well, the results are not good. Will I still be able to play the piano? Yeah, you can play the piano. I mean, the piano is not, uh, you don't play the piano in the shower, do you? Well, I won't anymore if you tell me I shouldn't. Well, you shouldn't for two reasons. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Number one, you got a disease where uh, uh, any kind of water spray burns your skin. Okay, Uh, moving on. What's the second thing? Well, you're going to ruin that piano. (gasps) Yeah. I mean, piano is an expense, a big ticket item, and you don't want to warp it with uh, shower water. I I absolutely don't want to do that, Dr. Glitter. Dr. Glitter, that's me. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Now, can we get back to the um, other thing I guess I sort of glossed over, which is that there's, I have something that makes water burn my skin. Excuse me, Dr. Glitter. Yes. The nurses and I are going to roller skate out for lunch. Do you need anything? Oh, just more glitter. You got it, Dr. G. <laughs> yeah, it sucks because I... I don't really have that much information about why I have this disease or where it comes from or anything because I had a real glittery doctor. Wow, so you, this might be prying, but I assume you can't bathe. No, 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 heavens no. I use dry shampoo all over my body. Wow. One thing you can do is uh, use dry shampoo all over your body. But please, whatever you do, don't let water touch your skin. Okay. I don't know what to do about my piano. I don't know. Should I take it to somebody who can fix it? I mean, it's got to be so waterlogged by now. Well, I mean, are you still able to play it? Well, yeah. All right. Well, that sounds all right. Maybe just like tip it over and dump out the excess water. <laughs> hey, Dr. G, yeah. the other nurses and I are going to do lines to blow off the scale on the floor. Want to join us? Of course I do. <laughs> so do you still play? I am not. I'm unclear. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I just felt so guilty that I had been playing the piano in the water for so long. I just felt like I didn't deserve to play anymore. Oh, Helly. So I started playing the trumpet instead, and I have regretted it every oh, day since. It's a beautiful jazz instrument. I know, but when you play that in the water, water gets right down into the flare part, goes right into your <gasps> body. Another thing you got to be aware of is... Uh, any brass instruments, specifically the trumpet, because um, (laughs) that water get right right in the bell, and uh, that's the flare part. And uh, try to remember that. And uh, it'll it'll go it'll go all the way into your body. But I and thank you for anticipating that I plan to cover myself in saran wrap so that I can still be underwater while I'm playing an instrument. Right. right. So that my skin doesn't get burned, but so I can play an instrument, but that I might choose a trumpet after giving up the piano. Well, you know, I'm a big uh, uh, night of fan, so I imagine you're just gonna wrap yourself in saran wrap to do most things. Oh damn, Doc G! <laughs> oh, I forget why I came in! <laughs> Woo! At any rate, I say we go back to talking to Todd because he's literally right next oh, to us. Hey, hey guys. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> you did it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a small tarp, eh? Yeah. It's a small, it's a small tarp. Oh. <clears throat> I always laugh like that when I'm having a great time with two strangers. Do you know that New Year's Eve is a holiday or not? I mean, it's. I know it's a time when people have fun and they they sing us the song. Oh, you have a song for New Year's Eve as well? Huh, what interesting. Do you mean as well? Uh, we do well, everyone knows the regular song we all sing for New Year's Eve. Of course Todd, we do. why don't you sing it and Absolutely. we'll sing along? Just the human song for New yeah. Year's Just Eve. Just the human song, plain old plain old. I would love to sing our human song for New Year's Eve. <clears throat> the earth has gone around the sun once more. We look to each Oh my God, it's not. Is that something we have ready to go? I don't understand. I don't know. Or is it just like another world he comes from where they sing on New Year's Eve? Maybe it's a beautiful place and we're, we're giving him a, not the benefit. He might be one of those really nice aliens that you see in all those Steven Spielberg movies. Let's give him another try. A year goes by, it's a year we say good new year to you. Now be on your way. Yeah, yeah. The, the New Year song. Yeah, that's yeah. everyone knows that. Yeah. Really good. Um, so whose uh, funeral are you on your way to? Oh, it's this uh, human friend of mine. 
Hmm. His name is Roberto. Was Roberto. Hmm. Was, right? That's what you say. What do you mean that's what we say? Well, that's what one says. Oh, yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. When someone, yeah, 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 that's what a human would say. That's what one human says. Sure, when all of us a are human all dies humans. And, mm-hmm. You know, Roberto doesn't need his name anymore because he's just a husk now. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. The hum- uh, Arthur, Miriam, the, the flowers have gotten here. Um, well, first of all, I don't know why they were so late That's because we're about late. to get kicked out. It's extremely <laughs> the late. The funeral's she- supposed to be over by now. <laughs> well, the, the florist said she was stuck in some bad traffic, which might be what's happened to Todd, too. Yeah, Todd. I don't first know. of all, I don't know that he's stuck in traffic because he doesn't know how to drive a car. So yeah. he goes everywhere on foot. I saw him talking to a car one time, saying, <laughs> let's go. You? you saw the same thing? Yes! What a weirdo. Yeah, I don't like him. Okay, listen, just, um, just work with me here. Let's, like, let's go. Oh, Oh my God, a mountain lion. I gotta get out of here. (laughs) All right, um, okay. Well, if we can't sing the song, then Roberto's soul will walk the earth forever. Uh, in unrest. Um, He'll have unfinished business here on the mortal plane. He certainly will. So I guess all we can do is hope that Todd shows up or someone else shows up who knows the song. Either way, we may be screwed. Please, Miriam, your language. Either way, we are screwed. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Miriam, Arthur, I just want to let you know that Roberto's soul was a pure soul. He was a... He was an amazing man, and he helped others. So Janine, if- this is no time for a eulogy. A man has died. Janine, Roberto really- is dead, and he's not getting any more alive. Ask me to speak. I had a A.A. A. Milne poem. I- I the remember- Winnie the Pooh guy? I was going it's to read an E.E. E. Cummings poem. That's too many single initial. Images. I was going to read a J.T. Walsh monologue. <laughs> the one from Sling Blade, where he drags the chair. <laughs> Face my face and hair. A mountain lion. <laughs> what a weird movie that was. <laughs> I can't believe it won 12 Academy Awards. <laughs> I know. Janine, for some reason, mm-hmm. if this doesn't work out, it's on you. <laughs> I don't want another soul on me. Oh. Guys, what do you think? Should we just make a... <laughs> my stupid phone. Oh, I hate it. It's so racist. <laughs> I'm sorry. My phone is also ringing. My phone plays like a oh. Hello? Oh. Uh-huh. Oh. No, I... Well, no, I wasn't planning to. Okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye. Who was it? Who was it? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was my cousin. Mm-hmm. Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds familiar. He, he is, <laughs> he needs to leave. Uh, he, we are roommates and he needs to leave to go defend uh, another cousin of ours who's committed a In crime. a small town? A small southern town? <laughs> no. A semi-large southern town. Oh, okay. Like Charles. <laughs> Todd, I, I think Helen might be lying to us about this cousin. Hey, can I confide something in you, Pam? Sure, that's what this part of the tarp's for, Todd. I feel like she might be one of those human-killing robots. So you're familiar with those? If she is, she's the most convincing one I've ever heard of. I mean, she's pretty good, but that whole story about her cousin Vinny? Yeah, and she says water can't get on her skin. Hey, yeah! She must be fired. That's how the body keeps cool. Didn't she say she played a piano in the shower? She doesn't sound right to me. What kind of shower is that white? (laughs) That's also a good point. Unless she was playing at a YMCA, she's very likely a robot killer, so we have to be very careful, Todd. Okay, thanks, Pam. Anyway, oh. I'd love to hear more about you, Pam. So you're, uh, and Todd, I don't know if you heard this because we mm. were in a different part of the tent. You're a hair model? Mm-hmm. That's so cool. That's oh, it's neat. just so, so. People take pictures of my hair. No big deal. Just but like, so you're on your way to a photo shoot, you said. Big fashion magazines. Yeah, big, what fashion big, magazine is it? The international one. But we, 
but is it international hair? In, oh, international oh, hair. Man. Or global hair? It's also global hair? Hey, Helly, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Over there? Get on the top. Have you noticed that um, Pam says she's a hair model? Yeah. But she has a crew cut? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I follow all the big hair trades. None of them are called international hair or yeah. global hair. The closest one is worldwide hair. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit of a hair nut myself. Yeah. And the other one, hair today, hair tomorrow. That's right. The idea is that it's just always hair. That's right. Yeah, it's really great. And it's like has one a lot of, of irony is, and humor in yeah, it. Yeah, I like hair you go. Yes, I do too. Yeah. I also like hair's looking at you. For people who want to have that flock of seagulls look where it almost seems like the hair is the staring back at, at them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyway, so let's take a look at our uh, November mag. Um, so you're covering hair, hair. Yes. Okay, that's I'll our cover celebratory. Hair, hair. Okay, wonderful. Um, so Miguel, <laughs> whatever you want to do, I just want you to feel free in November to just get hair, hair. You know, really up that column for us. Right. I'm thinking of full color photos of multiple heads of hair. Oh my! Why haven't we thought of that? You before? are the voice we have been needing, they looking for for about twenty years. Oh. Vera. Why has no one thought to do this before? I don't know! <laughs> That's why we're here today and here tomorrow. <laughs> we're the same thing every day. We're the number one international hair magazine. You can tell we're international because two of us sound like this and one person doesn't. That's right! That's intonations. <laughs> You're the inter part and I'm the national. <laughs> 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 Hey, guys, um, I just noticed a, a possible break in the clouds. I didn't mean to break up your conversation. No, that's, oh, no, uh, no. That's, that's all right, Pam. That's totally cool. Do you mind if I set my coffee cup on the top of your perfectly flat hairdo that you're worried about messing up? I don't mind, Helly, but if I should trip or stumble, it might drop liquid onto your skin. Touché. My coffee stays in my hand. Guys, maybe we should put our cards on the table here. Okay. I feel like one or two or all of us might be, and this is going to sound weird, and please don't hate me for saying this, human killing robots. Oh. What a relief. I am. Thank you so much. I am too. Oh, I am oh too. My God. I killed Roberto. Oh my God. Yes. And you're going to sing a solo away. Hilarious. Yeah, I know. Oh, that is I very know. ironic. Yeah, right? right? Is that irony? I think so. Let me listen to that one song and I'll get back to you. I can do it later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Do that on your own you time, killed Ellie. the person that you're singing the funeral song for. May yeah. or may not be ironic, but it is super cool. Yeah. I haven't even made a kill yet. I'm so No, impressed. you haven't? Oh, bless your heart. No, I, I have killed 12 here. pianos. <gasps> I've drowned each and every one of them. Wow, Wait you kill minute. musical instruments. Yeah. You kill the pianos? Oh, yeah. Um, Pam, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. She claims to be a human killing robot, but she's killing pianos? She does not know the difference between a piano and a human? Yeah. She's trying way too hard to be a robot, Todd. Do you think Yeah. she's pretending to be a human killing robot? She's some sort of spy or she's pretending. She knows better. Yeah. Yeah. Why would a doctor? <laughs> Why would she go to a doctor? And the doctor tell her that she has a weird disorder. Plus, I think Dr. Glitter is a Muppet character. If, no, that might be Dr. Teeth. Dr. Teeth. But he, he was glitter. Him. He was pretty glittery, though. Maybe she should be my first kill. Oh, Pam, I'm so happy for you. Thanks, Todd. But we got to make sure she's 100% human. Okay. We gotta There's do only one way to do the that. The test, of course. The <laughs> test. The series of questions. Hey, um... Helly, do you mind uh, if I just ask you a few questions? Oh, oh I see, I see. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ask me your questions. What? I don't, I don't understand. Why are oh, you? Oh, nothing. Okay. You see a wasp on your arm. What do you do? Kill it. Okay. You're walking along a desert road. And you see a tortoise turned over 
on the side of the road. Drink it. Okay. Uh, it's raining. Someone is crying. Can you tell if they're raining or not? Cannot get water on my skin. It burns me. Okay. Helly, I would like to record this for posterity. Do you mind speaking into the microphone, please? I feel very comfortable speaking into this microphone because it's not the barrel of a gun. Well, you know. Guys, when I said I drowned 12 pianos, I was talking about Renzo Piano, the architect's family. <gasps> oh, oh my, my God. God. I, I can't believe so we didn't make that association. Of it's a name. It He's the most quiet. famous architect. Piano, it piano. means quiet. <laughs> oh, of course. You killed a whole family. I had to piano all of those pianos. Sure. Wow. That tracks. Because a car told me to. Which one? <laughs> you know that, that little one that sounds like a mountain lion? I know exactly the car you're talking about. Right down about. to Times Square. Well, I am just about at the end of my rope, Janine. If That's Todd... a really inappropriate thing to say since Roberto appears to have hanged himself. <laughs> <laughs> appears to have. Which may or may not have been a carefully cloaked robot murder. Here's the thing. We walked into a room. He was sitting in a chair with a noose around his neck, <laughs> just holding it in the air. And a bullet hole in his body. Yeah. Oh, this is so upsetting. I assumed he hanged himself I because did too. the pain of the Why would you have a there. rope if you didn't hang yourself? <laughs> I feel so terrible about his soul. Maybe he didn't have a pure soul and it needs to get out of there then. Oh, Janine, what a rude thing to say. <laughs> at Roberto's funeral. Wow. Well, I don't want this all to come down on me. I, I'll sing the song. I'll sing the song. I, oh. You're about to get kicked out of this here funeral home. Yeah, you got to get out of the funeral home. You got one minute. <laughs> we don't hear that funeral song playing. You get kicked out of the funeral home. The funeral song's coming. It's coming. It's... Listen, now that we've ascertained we're all human-killing robots, Yeah. Mm -hmm. we got to get to that funeral... I'll sing the song, and then we'll kill everyone there. They're all humans. Ultimately, that's the best irony I've ever heard. Right? Wow. It's great. But look. Dying at a funeral, I love it. My internal clock says we got less than a minute to get there. Okay. I'll call us a car. Here's one. <laughs> Hello. Will you take us to... The funeral home? Who's <laughs> run by those hillbillies. Those prospectors? <laughs> Okay, uh, so we've got 30 seconds left. I, um, Arthur, Miriam, maybe we should just pack up our things and give up. Or oh, hold on a second. Oh, 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 oh. Stop, 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 stop the funeral. Look at oh, you. Oh, look him. who's here. Sorry I'm late, everyone, and I hope you don't mind that I brought a couple guests. No, the more the merrier, as long as we can get the song and get on with it. All right, Todd. Go ahead and sing your funeral song. You better do it good. We're going to kill you. <laughs> Todd, are you all right? Yeah, that was weird. That those guys <laughs> they, they said they were going to kill they're everyone. Very, they're very threatened by people overstaying. Oh. It's good for business, I guess. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dearly beloved, we say goodbye to Roberto in the traditional way by singing the song that we all know. Please, sing along with me, won't you? Why did we bother getting him to sing it if everyone's gonna do know. it? No! <clears throat> Roberto, this one's for you. <laughs> you have died. You are not here. You've gone away. We shed a tear. Everybody. It's time to say goodbye, my friend. Your life at last came to an end. Da, 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 da
that? Oh, my phone again. Hello? We can kill them all? Thanks. Great news, guys. Yeah? We got clearance to kill all these humans. Oh, I love my job. Woo! This is fulfilling. And it all happened at a place called Under a Big <laughs> Rainstorm. Gene Philippique, where can people find you should they wish to find you? And what would you like to promote? Um, I do shows Friday nights at UCB on Franklin, Soundtrack at 930, and Thursday nights at Iowa West Quartet with uh, fellow Spontanean Asian people, Craig Kakowski, Bob Dassey, sometimes Carla Kakowski as well. And I'm on social media, my last name, Philippique. There you go. Little Janet Varney, same things. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Janet Varney. <laughs> um, when is this here? I know that's a classic question. Uh, oh, listen, guys, you must, in six, a mere seven days, watch the early premiere of Stand Against Evil on oh, IFC. Oh, yeah, 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 It is yeah. a new show on IFC. I think it comes on regularly on Tuesday nights, but uh, sneak peek uh, preview premiere on uh, Halloween. Because Halloween it is a, premiere? It is a story. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, about, uh, it's about finding demons in a small town with what I like to think of as a sexist bigot. Right? I play a sheriff, John C. McGinley, the Archie Bunker character in question. That's Fun. right. Created by Dana Gould. That's right. Very funny stand-up comedian. Um, I cannot wait for this show. Music by Mr. Evan Schletter. That, my friends. How about it? Is the reason to tune in. For Spontonians, this is a must-see. <laughs> Evan Schletter. Check him out, ebenschletter.com. Seek out Eben Schletter's non-spontaneous nation work because Eben Schletter is only the best. How do you spell Eben Schletter? It's simple, stupid. It goes like this. E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. <laughs> As for me, I am P.F. Tompkins on all the things. Um, our next live show is October 30th. We're going to be participating in the Now Hear This Festival, um, along with many of your favorite podcasts. That's in Anaheim. Tickets are on sale now. November 5th, we're back at Largo at the Coronet with many special guests. And November 13th, we are making our New York area debut at the Bell House in Brooklyn. As of this recording, the first show is sold out, but there are still tickets for the 10 p.m. Come see that. I'm going to be at the Bell House all weekend long. Friday, Super Ego Live. Saturday, Thrilling Adventure Hour. Sunday, Spontaneity Nation. Please do come out and see us because we would like to see you. That is it. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti! Rana Glickman here from Rana and Beverly to tell you this is your big chance to see Rana and Beverly live with some of your favorite podcasts also performing. Comedy Bang Bang, NPR's Pop Culture Happy Hour, Spontanea Nation with Paul F., who we adore, and Law. The Now Hear This Podcast Festival is October 28th to the 30th in sunny Anaheim, California. It's going to be absolutely fabulous. See all your favorite acts live. Go to nowhearthisfest.com to get your tickets, plus information on hotels and travel. Why not stay for the weekend? This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. 